Hello friends. Welcome to my channel. Given the enormous speed at which computer technology is advancing, the number of electronic systems used are increasing more and more. This growth is also continuing in the automotive engineering sector. However, it also means that the complexity of the overall vehicle system is increasing. Individual systems such as engine management, have been improved in recent years. However, the innovations are mainly achieved, by the interaction between several individual systems. The individual elements must network, so that the wealth of information managed by the different systems, can be used elsewhere in the system as a whole. The solution was the development of serial bus systems, with which large amounts of data can be transferred from different sources. A series bus system, was first used in a vehicle in 1991, when the CAN bus was introduced in the Mercedes-Benz 500e. In 1991, the CAN bus, controller area network, was the first bus system, to be introduced in a motor vehicle in mass production. In the meantime it has established itself as the standard system in the automotive sector. The CAN bus is used in various areas of the motor vehicle. These areas differ in the demands they place on the network. Due to these different requirements, buses with different data rates are used, which offer an optimal cost-benefit ratio for the respective area of application. A distinction is made between high-speed and low-speed CAN buses. NC is a high-speed bus, defined in ISO 11898-2, and operates at data rates ranging from 125 kilobits per second to 1 megabits per second. The data transfer is therefore able to meet the real-time requirements of the powertrain. The CAN B is a low-speed bus, defined in ISO 11898-3, and operates at a bit rate of 5 to 125 kilobits per second. For many applications in the comfort and body area, this speed is sufficient to meet the real-time requirements demanded in this area. The CAN bus is increasingly used for vehicle diagnostics. Here. The electronic control unit, is connected directly to the CAN bus, and thus immediately receives the information necessary for diagnosis. The network node comprises the microcontroller for the application software, CAN controller and CAN transceiver. The CAN controller is responsible for the transmit and receive operation. It generates the bitstream for data communication from the binary data to be transmitted and transmits it to the transceiver on the TXT line. The transceiver amplifies the signals, generates the voltage level required for differential data transmission, and transmits the serially processed bitstream on the bus line. Incoming messages are processed by the transceiver and sent to the CAN controller on the RXT line. The microcontroller running the application program, controls the CAN controller, prepares the data for transmission and evaluates the received data. And uses two communication states, dominant and recessive, with which information bits are transmitted. When messages are received, the CAN transceiver converts the signal level back into logical states. A differential amplifier subtracts the CAN low level from the CAN high level. The differential data transmission therefore filters out interferences on the line. High-speed and low-speed CANs, use different voltage levels to transmit dominant and recessive states. In the recessive state, the high-speed CAN, uses a voltage of 2.5 volts on both lines. In the dominant state, a voltage of 3.5 volts is present on CAN high, and a voltage of 1.5 volts is present on CAN low. On the low-speed CAN, a voltage of 0 volts is present on CAN high, in the recessive state and 5 volts on CAN low. In the dominant state, voltages of 3.6 volts and 1.4 volts, are present on the CAN high and CAN low respectively. The CAN communication protocol is a carrier sense, multiple access protocol with collision detection, and arbitration on message priority. CSMA means that each node on a bus, must wait for a prescribed period of inactivity, before attempting to send a message. CD plus AMP means that collisions, are resolved through a bitwise arbitration, based on a pre-programmed priority of each message, in the identifier field of a message. The higher priority identifier always wins bus access. That is, the last logic high in the identifier, keeps on transmitting, 
because it is the highest priority. Since every note on a bus, takes part in writing every bit, as it is being written, an arbitrating node, knows if it placed the logic high bit on the bus. The ISO standard, with the standard 11-bit identifier, provides for signaling rates from 125 kilobits per second to 1 megabits per second. The standard was later amended with the extended 29-bit identifier. The standard 11-bit identifier field provides for 2,048 different message identifiers, whereas the extended 29-bit identifier provides 537 million identifiers. In March 2012, Robert Bosch GmbH presented the CAN protocol with flexible data rate, CAN FD. The protocol features an extended user data length, from 8 to 64 bytes, and significantly higher data transfer rates. Its properties, position can FD between high speed CAN and flex ray. CAN FD, flex ray and other buses used in the automotive industry, we will see in later videos. Electrostatic discharge, is commonly known as the sensation of an electronic shock, when you step on a carpet or open a car door. ESD voltages are higher than the voltages of typical electronic circuits, and electronic circuits are not inherently suitable for withstanding them. ESD is critical for electronic devices. For example, integrated circuits can be affected at silicon level by ESD. There are two basic concepts of ESD protection. Quite often seen, is a breakdown behavior of ESD protection structures. Another solution is a so-called snapback behavior. Both have their benefits and drawbacks, and both are being used in the industry. ESD protection in general is a high ohmic device up to the trigger voltage. Above this voltage the device provides a low ohmic path to ground, and can carry a few amperes for a short period of time. The PESD-1 CAN, is designed for the protection of two automotive CAN bus lines from the damage caused by ESD and surge pulses. The device can be used for both, high-speed CAN bus, and fault-tolerant CAN bus protection. The PESD-1 CAN provides a surge capability of up to 200 Watt per line, for an 820 microseconds waveform. The CAN physical layer is a dual-wire bus, with a VCC by two related recessive level. Smooth output wave shaping is very important. Electromagnetic emission mainly depends on the falling and rising edge of the CAN bus waveforms. Achieving a high EMC performance is not only a matter of the transceiver, a careful system implementation, termination, topology, external circuitry and PCB layout, is also very important. Usage of common mochoke and type of termination, depend on the application and OEM requirements. Common mochoke provides high impedance for common mode signals and low impedance for differential signals. Due to this, common mode signals produced by RF noise, by non-perfect transceiver driver symmetry, get effectively attenuated while passing the choke. In fact, a common mode choke helps to reduce emission and to improve immunity against common mode disturbances without adding a large amount of distortion on king lines. Split termination reduces EME and improves EMI. The split termination circuit is a modified standard termination, and consists of two equal value split resistors, and a bypass capacitor, tied between the resistors and ground. The two resistors and the capacitor work as a low pass filter. A common mode signal is terminated to ground through the C split. In result high frequency noise, will be directly shunted to ground. The two resistors should match as closely as possible. OEMs might have dedicated circuits prescribed in their specifications. Please refer to the corresponding OEM specifications for individual details. Thanks for your attention. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.